Hey guys, Matt Lady here, and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to plan a build and basically be less shit when starting a new league. Uh, this isn't going to talk specifically about how to make your tree the best tree and how to make your build just the best build ever, but it's going to make you plan a little better and be a little more prepared. Now, some of these things might be new to you, so use whatever you need to use. If they're all old news to you, then you could stop watching. So the first thing is when you have your skill tree, you want to amend it to make leveling progression easier for yourself, make your pathing easier. So do things like cutting the chaff of the tree or cutting the excess, anything that isn't regarding the core of your build or notables you can't actually take advantage of early on to make yourself a nicer and neater leveling tree. Here is a good example of that. This is something I'll have day one and this shows me a nice and easy progression from my starting area to important notables that don't actually impact the build but are overall great for leveling life, mana regen, some base damage AOE, all the things you want to have when leveling. So the next step is to write down your gems and links. Now you want to write down what gems and links you're going to be using for your build and especially have them in order of when you attain them so it makes it nice for yourself. For example, I'm going to be playing Flame Blast, so I get Flame Blast, well, then I have faster casting control destruction before that, but I don't have access to increased AOE until later in Act 4, so that's going to be like lower a priority you know so I get fire pen first that's actually gated behind the library quest and you also want to make sure that you have your leveling gem set up so it's easy for yourself you don't have to be frantically looking at oh I want to level with spark but I don't know what support gems I get this way you know okay I'm using spark I have access to added cold and added lightning damage I'll use those until I get to act two in which I attain faster casting and then I gain stuff like control destruction you can even go a step further and put down the fact that oh okay I have herald and thunder and Herald of Ice access in Act 2, which I can both be using with the fact that I get Clarity early on in Act 1. This is pretty nice because then you don't have to worry about how to plan yourself out, even when it comes to planning your leveling progression. Any way to cut the time in which you're fumbling about in the league is great for getting closer to endgame sooner and faster. Now one step further is, say I'm playing Flame Blast, and I want to make sure that my class, which, which I know gets Flame Blast, but you might not if you're a newer player. So if you go to the wiki and just type in Flame Blast PUB wiki, you scroll on the bottom, it shows that, okay, it shows which gets this as a quest reward from Sever the Hand, or you know, in Act 3, uh, also as a vendor reward after completing the quest. On top of that, Marauder, Ranger, and Duels do not. So if I was playing a Marauder Flame Blast build, I would have to have either purchase it from someone else or have a friend or a party member get it for me. Make sure that your gems, at least your key gems, are obtainable by your class or someone you know. Otherwise, you might be struggling earlier in a league begging in local chat for someone to buy you a gem. So the next step you want to do is once you have your gems planned out, you want to make sure that your aura calculations are correct as far as reservation goes. All right? So if I just type in PoE aura calc, um, it should pop up. There we go. Uh, this one, Mike Latz, or however you would pronounce that, uh, he's the one I use personally. Okay. Now I already have mine pre-done, but as you can see, this is pretty much the layout for how it looks. And you basically say, all right, this is your mana res uh, mana reduced on tree. I thought you have fourteen percent. I want to run period of fire, herald device, and arctic armor. Okay, I have seventy-five percent mana reduced, twenty-five open. That's plenty for my build. So this is what it looks like when the page is locked or condensed. You can actually set how much total mana you're going to have, total life in case you want to reserve that. Stuff like Sky Force, Blood Magic, all the uniques that affect it. It has all that added in. You can then click unlock the page to re-edit it if you'd like to, whether you want to link some with Enlighten and Enhance. You can actually make new groups if you have multiple groups of auras for those low life builds or those CI builds that are running multiple sets of auras. This can really help facilitate your needs. So the next step is to go through your unique buy list or the uniques you want to buy or purchase for your build that are mandatory or build enabling. For me, it's Cloak of Flame. That is what I want and that's what I'm going to have on day one. You can see the full list of unique items in the Path of Exile wiki. Then you can check the different sets. Uh, you can go to Armor Types for me, Body. It is a int base, so it should be yes, yes, yes. Boom, Cloak of Flame, boom. Low level 18, cool. This is what I want, Cloak of Flame. Perfect. Now, after you know what uniques you want, what you want to do is you want to set up your uh, your whoop parameters. You get whooped. You go to peewee and you want to type in, say, I want Cloak of Flame, that's what I want. And say if I'm in a new league, I want to buy a Cloak of Flame, and I want the max buyout to be 5 chaos. I want it not corrupted, and I want to have the guy online. Boom, search. Of course, there's plenty of in standard. But what you want to do in a new league is you want to click search live. And that means every 30 seconds it's going to refresh this. And anytime anyone posts a Cloak of Flame within my parameters, which is not corrupted or clean, and for under or equal to 5C, 
I will get this sound. Whoop, whoop. And what this means is that someone just posted it. Okay, so you can just have this on a different window, on a second monitor, or just minimize. And if someone triggers it, you'll get the dank ass whoop. And that means that, oh shit, someone's saying what I want. This is a great way you can set this up the second the league starts, because that is when we will have access to Hardcore Breach, and it'll say Breach League. Um, and you can put those parameters on. I can actually put on Hardcore Essence, despite the league being non-existent. So that'll be updated today in a few hours, actually. So once I know what main uniques I want, say in my example, I want Belly of the Beast. It's a very common item. A lot of people use it, a lot of casters, a lot of whatever builds. Pretty much any life build can use Belly of the Beast. I want to use Belly of the Beast in a new league. That's what I want, right? All right, now the problem is, what if I'm playing a build that uses a lot of blue gems, a lot of int gems, it might be difficult to get the colors I need. So what you could do is you can use the Verici calculator. Now before we hop over, just take note of the requirements for strength and dex. This is actually what dictates how common you get certain colors and what combinations on gear. So this is 6868, okay? So here's the Verici calculator. Uh, you could just Google this up by typing Path of Exile Verici calculator. There are many of it, this is the guy that made it. So we have a our belly of the beast it is six socket it is 68 dex 68 strength we already established that it has zero in so you can just leave that thing blank now say i wanted to get three green and three red we type calculate it would take on a chromatic an average success rate of almost 16 percent it'll take about six and a half chromes to get on average so that's extremely easy okay now say we want to get something like three green and three blue okay so now it says the best method is to use Vrici's one blue with a success rate of about 1%, 95 average attempts, so it'll cost, on average, like 400 chromatics. Now, there's a standard deviation, so none of these numbers are completely accurate, but it's a good estimation. It's a good representation of what you could expect, okay? Because, for example, say if I wanted something like one green, five blue, well, okay, that's going to take roughly 7.5 thousand chromatics. Maybe I shouldn't use Belly of the Beast for my build. This is the whole point of planning ahead because you can set your expectations and see these kind of realities and, well, raw numbers that, okay, I want to use belly, but fuck, this might be a bad idea. And this is a pretty easy and straightforward one. It's just write down your bandits you want to do. Now, what I mean by bandits is that you get the bandit quest deal with the bandits in every sort of act two, normal, cruel, merciless, and they have different rewards corresponding to their difficulties and which ones you help or kill. So if you kill all of them, you always get a path of point. That doesn't change. But if I help... You know, uh, Alira in Act 1, I get mana in Act 2, I get cast in Act 3, I get a power charge. So I always charge in Act 3, it's always attack, cast, fizz in the last one, and then it's res, mana, life in the first one. So for my build, I'm helping Oak, so I write down, okay, help Oak, Act 140 life. And then I'm helping Alira. Okay, Act Two, help Alira. Five cast speed. Oh, and Act Three. Um, these old charges don't matter for me. Cool. I kill all. It's good to just have yourself again. You know, write down what you need to write down. Oh God, don't help and kill in the same party in the same zone, because you can PVP each other, and and you will PK someone. This does happen if you're in a party with multiple people and multiple different people within the same zone, both help and kill the same bandit at the same time when you're in the click screen. It makes them hostile, so watch out. So it doesn't hurt to plan ahead even your zone level progressions. What I mean by this is you want to stay in general two to four levels under the zone level. You can see this by clicking tab, looking at the upper right corner of your screen. But in general, what I like to do is I like to pretty much progress to normal on a standard pace. I don't really stop to farm ever until I hit Dried Lake. Now Dried Lake's 34. I normally stay at Dried Lake until 40 at what time I go and do Cruel Lab then finish up Act 4. I use the same process for Dried Lake in Accrual. I stay here till roughly 60, 65, and then I go do Cruel Lab. This trivializes the lab content, which can be very difficult for some people, and actually makes clearing Act 4, which is kind of the scarier bosses, quite easy. So this is a callback to our earlier talk, which is the whoops and Pee Wee trade. Now, a really important thing to set up with the whoops is you gotta do jewels. Now, jewels are really cheap, actually, early in the league, and getting a good three to four prop jewel can be crazy cheap and it will get insanely expensive later on. So it's actually good to purchase them now. It's actually also a good way to make a lot of currency in League. Flipping jewels is crazy profit, especially if you like to play standard and stuff like that, because bringing four prop jewels from League back to standard has insane profit margins, all right? Now, what I like to do is I like to go through the jewel list. I use pwafix.net, and I find out what prefixes and suffixes that I like to use for my build. So now we already discussed that I'm playing Flame Blast, so we'll just use that as an example. So the things that affect me are fire damage. So I copy it, paste it, 
I put in a little notepad. I'm gonna put, take this off screen now. Uh, but I copy and paste all the ones that affect my build. All right, so we're gonna go through the list. We have life, we have fire damage, uh, and you just can pretty much go through the list. Mana, mana regen. These are all cool. We have stuff like uh, res is okay, I guess, for a suffix. You want attack speed, area damage, cast speed, and you just go through the list and write, copy and paste all the jewels things that you think okay these all affect my build these are all good for my build you know if i'm playing cyclone for example uh, i want fizz with maces me melee damage damage area damage attack speed physical damage you make yourself a list now we're going to transition to pv trade okay so this is how you build a jewel parameter now so now you, what you're going to do is you're going to input all the things we wrote down so we have area damage we have fire damage we have damage just as a mod pretty much everyone's going to have that one now we want to be very, very careful with making sure you put the exact mods that are on jewels in here. Uh, they're very, very finicky when it comes to how they actually work. Um, so you want to, there's like, as you can see, there's tons of different roles and some are implicit and some are total mod values. So just be really careful making sure it's the exact mod from the jewel. Uh, another really common one that gets confusing is life. So if I type in uh, maximum life, the first thing that pops up is this, but that's actually flat life. You want to make sure you're getting percent increased maximum life. So this, these are the things we want in our jewel. These are the roles we want. So what we do now is we're typing count, which all this does is specifies the number of mods that should be matched, which means if I put count three, that means when I click search, it's going to show up a minimum of jewels with three mods in it, okay? This has fire damage, cast speed, area damage, um, fire damage, cast speed, area. This actually has spell with shields. So this jewel is fucking insane, really. Um... But yeah, so that's how the parameter search works. Again, you can also do the whole thing with the live search, and you can go fucking whoop, and that's that. So, but what you could also do is if you want to have specific mods and jewels that you absolutely fucking need, all right? So if I need to have life in a jewel because I'm playing a, you know, life-based dagger build, and the most you can ever get is fucking 6k life on a good day, uh, you want to type in uh, maximum life in a new filter group, all right? So you add a new filter group, type in maximum life and I just type count minimum one this means that this is gonna have a always have one life and then it'll have two mods in our upper pool okay you can also if you want to be able to look for a four prop jewel this this might get a little expensive I'm just actually put search off um, this means that we're looking for a jewel that fizz fire damage area damage increased has three of these mods plus life so these are probably these are like top tier jewels now this is 4x 10x 14x 20x you're getting pretty crazy prices that being said, uh, you could probably get these jewels in a league for under an exalted during the first week. So you can see the profit margin I'm talking about here. Um, it's just good to pick these up if you plan on playing, especially if you're playing on softcore. You have, you know, you, that's all about thinking down the line. So this is, jewels are very important, especially setting up your, your whoop parameters early on. Even if it's for two prop jewels that you want magic, you know, I search for rare jewels, but if I wanted, say, a two prop jewel, I wanted just one of these and one of these. I could make it so I search for just a magic jewel that's not corrupted so I can regal it myself. Um, if I could fucking click no. Uh, that way when these pop up, all right, so now I can buy these for one exalted each so I get the joy of regaling them myself maybe. Um, often jewels like this damage life and damage area damage, pretty much if you hit a variety of things in regal, it's probably still sellable. So with everything we've talked about today, just make sure you all aggregate it, all put it into one spot. Uh, I use Google Documents, that way it keeps me organized and keeps my links and my uh, gems and my desired uniques and my bandits and my aura calculus it's all in one spot so when i'm actually starting to leak i can put it on a second monitor have it minimized and just so i have it all accessible have a place to put it all and give yourself a little name of a build i'm playing elementalist flame blast 2.5 so ellie flame blast 2.5 now related to naming a build and this is the final point in this video when it comes to naming a build please for the love of god don't make it some super cringy fucking name uh, there's tons of builds out there. Pretty much everyone has done every build at some point. Nobody owns a build. Just because I'm known for playing Cyclone doesn't mean I've invented Cyclone. Stuff like, you know, oh, fuck, where's one? I know they're around here. You cringy motherfuckers. Oh, that's per. I cast magic missiles. Alright, that's getting there. Savage Blaster. Uh, oh. King of the Forest. Oh, God. Oh, it's happening. Okay, I'm fucking the cringe is happening. The seven stone unholy chieftain. Okay, all right, that's enough. I'm gonna vomit. All right, here's a good one. Yes, it's in caps, and yes, it's really fucking ah juggernaut. But it tells you what it is. 
it tells you what it does it tells you what it can do it's not super pretentious it's not super cringy that's just a good old build name so if you're going to make a build in the forums and everything we just discussed today pretty much makes you capable of making your own build in the forums yeah that about wraps it up though good luck with breach league i hope this information has helped you oh god pick your poison necromancer what is that Hope you guys have some good luck in Breach League. Uh, if you have any questions, ask them in the comment section, PM me in game, or yeah, you'll find me. I'm around. Matt Luddy out. Good luck, people.